So you want to design your own Arduino from scratch, right? Well, you've come to the right place. In this three hour course, you will learn everything that you need to know about designing your own Arduino Nano PCB. We'll start with the course by downloading and installing Altium Designer. If you already have Altium and a license, then that's great. If not, you can follow along using the free Altium Circuit Maker. Any version of Altium will work. Next, I take you step by step on how to create your own component library so that you can design your own components if you really need to. But there is a very high possibility that you'll need to create your own components and apply 3D CAD models to them. Then I will show you how to do schematic design. You will learn how to recreate the Arduino Nano schematic as well as wiring components in schematic view. Once your schematic is completed, you will then need to transfer your schematic into PCB view as well as define your board shape. Thereafter, I show you how to place components on the board, create a multi-layer board, which will consist of six layers. For this six layer board, I teach you how to route between layers using vias and how to strategically place components on the PCB. Now, routing a PCB can be quite consuming, right? But by following my step-by-step -step process, you will learn how to auto-route your PCB and this is critical for when you are faced with a complex design and you want to save time and effort, right? Now, just keep in mind that the auto router is not perfect and it makes mistakes from time to time. I will walk you through on how to correct your design and eliminate design errors before sending them off to your manufacturer. This will save you a lot of money for numerous design iterations. Finally, I teach you how to create your Gerber files, which are the files that your manufacturer can read in order to construct your printed circuit board. I used NextPCB as my manufacturer of choice. I will explain why in just a bit. So all of this in three hours, we have a lot to cover in this course and you'll really benefit from being able to design and manufacture your own custom PCBs. But don't take my word for it. Check out all of the positive reviews that I have received on this course. Before we get into the content, let me briefly explain who I am if you don't already know. My name is Ritesh Kanji, CEO of Augmented Startups, where I teach topics on PCB design, IoT, AI, computer vision, and robotics. Currently, we are very close to 80,000 subscribers, and I also have a master's degree in electronic engineering from the University of Johannesburg. So this free course is sponsored by NextPCB. If you register right now, you'll get a $100 free coupon to use on your next order. So it doesn't matter if you're coming from Altium, KiCad, Eagle, etc. NextPCB will help you to both manufacture and assemble your PCBs for you. It's very simple to get started. On the website, you can just put in the dimensions of your board, enter in how many boards you want, the number of layers, as well as the board thickness. And just like that, you'll receive an instant quote. Now, of course, if you have very specific requirements, you can also customize your order. They also have this really cool software called Next DFM. So normally when you convert your Altium or KiCad files into Gerber files, you can sometimes encounter some unexpected problems that can often destroy the functionality of your board. Now, this is where Next DFM comes in. It is a one-click design analysis tool that checks for any hidden dangers in your design files and provides low-cost optimization solutions so that your board just works. I mean, there's nothing worse than spending all of your time designing your PCB, spending all that money to get it manufactured and assembled, only for it to come back as a useless paperweight. <sighs> Nothing is more frustrating. Trust me, I know. So that is why I recommend signing up to use this free tool and to check your design files before manufacturing. All of the links, libraries, and instructions mentioned in this course will be in the links down below. Okay, so let's get started with designing your very own Arduino. Okay, so in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to download Altium Designer. So first, open up your browser. You can use any browser, but in this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. Once your browser is open, I need you to copy and paste the link that can be found in the resource section of this lecture. And then it will take you to a site where you can download Altium Designer. 
The software is free to use for 30 days. If you find you like the software, you can purchase the license day after. For now, scroll down to this button over here and click to download. So the actual download is 3 gigabytes of data. So I think pause this video and return to it once you have downloaded it. Okay, so now we're back. We can install Altium and get right to it. First, extract the .iso file to any folder. Click on Altium Designer Setup.exe. Then click Next. If you want, you can read the end user agreement. Click Accept and then Next. Click Next again. And again. For now, I'm gonna skip the actual installation process. Once you are done installing, click Finish with Launch Altium Designer box checked. And now we shall wait for the program to launch. Whatever error pops up, just ignore it and cancel them. And finally, if you have a license, you can browse to where it's saved and install it. If you do not, then don't worry. I'll ensure that the length of this course will be covered in less than a 30 day trial. So that's it for this lecture. Next lecture, I shall teach you about the whole interface and how to get used to it. Okay, so for those who don't have a license, um, I suggest you get a trial 30 day license from Altium. Okay, so first of all, we go into Google, type in Altium, and go to the first link, and then you'll see the screen, and then you click on free trial. So you have to fill in your details, uh, put Altium Designer, you can put any, uh, the country that you live in, your name, surname, company if you have one, and obviously your email address phone number and then whatever you want to say to them uh, reasons why you'd want the license so I'll just say hi I would like to trial Altium Designer for my business and you can say anything um, I'm sure they won't reject you but you can say request free trial, click on that. And then when you come back, uh, you should get an email. I got this email. Um, it says good day Ritesh and we'll be sending you your lesson soon. Okay, uh, and then you'll be getting another email. Okay, so this is the email that I got and this one gives you um, your Altium Live account. Okay, so you can see all the information that uh, Altium gives you to get started. It shows you how to activate your license, how to download the software and um, other things related to this. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome back. So by now, you should have Altium Design installed on your system. In this lecture, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the user interface. As I know, it can seem a little scary at first. But don't worry, I shall help you demystify this interface. Okay, so to get started, click File, New Project, and then click on Project, New Schematic, then again, New PCB. We can rename project and PCB to my first Arduino. The schematic will be renamed to Arduino main. This is because we are going to have more than one schematic document in this project. Okay, so let's briefly look at the interface in schematic view. Okay, so we have the system menu over here. We have access to features including environment preferences, licensing, and server information. Over here we have document tabs. Each open document has its own tab. Up here on the top we have menus, toolbars, and shortcuts. 
and these resources change according to the active document editor. In the top right hand corner, we have the navigation. This provides us controls for jumping to a particular document. In the center, we have the main design window. You can display, arrange, and edit the open documents in this window. On the extreme left, we have the workspace panels. Various panels providing functionality specific to a particular editor or at a design system level. Panels can be docked, placed in a pop-out mode or left floating. So in the next video, I'm going to get started with building the components. See you then. Okay, so to get things started, uh, in this lecture, we're going to create the at mega 328. So this is part one. In part one, we're going to design only the schematic symbol. In part two, we'll design the footprint of the Arduino at mega 328. Okay, so make sure you've got a clear sheet. We're going to RS components. The link will be in the resource section, so you can copy and paste that. Uh, I need you to go into the data sheet. So if you have the data sheet, that will also be in the resource section. This will show us the pins that we need to do and the, how the body should look like, more or less. So first go into File, Project, Integrated Library, and that will show up in the Project View. Click Add New to Project, Schematic Library. And do that again, Add New to Project and PCB Library. Those are the basic bare bones that you need to create a component library. So now we're going to rename all of them. So make sure you go into a folder that we know, a common folder, that'll be our Dropbox. And in Dropbox, I want you to create a new folder and rename that Ultium Libraries. All the libraries that you create from now on, I want you to store it in this folder. This makes it very easy to find all your component libraries. So create the this one, Atmo, Microcontrollers. And in one library, you can store more than one micro microcontroller. Click Save. Uh, now you can copy and paste, or you can just select that. You can just delete the extension. Copy. And now we just need to save the integrated library. Save. Okay, so you can see all of them are more or less the same, uh, same name, just to keep everything consistent. Okay, so let's create the body of this Atmel chip. Okay, so we have multiple bodies uh, or configurations or packages that we can use for, for this. So we want to focus on the 32 TQFP package. This is the package that we want. You can create it more or less the same. But I'll show you exactly how we're going to go about doing this. Okay, go back to Altium. Click on Place. And go down to Rectangle. The body will be more or less a rectangle for this. Okay, make it round about that size. Make sure your grid is 10. To change your grid, press G on your keyboard. Just move your rectangle to the center and go back to your data sheet and then either print this document out or you can keep it on a separate monitor. Okay, now let's add the pins to it. We don't need a pin zero. You can delete that one. To rotate, press space. Okay, and then do the rest. Now, uh, this, this will be quite tedious, so I'm going to end up uh, speeding up this process just to make it uh, non-tedious for you. Okay, 10, 11, 12, and continue. As you can see, I'm speeding up. Okay, 
Put it on one side and then do the rest for the other side. Because it's a 32 pin, we want it to be 8 on each each side. So we just move that over there. Make it slightly smaller because we know we can fit uh, more pins than usual. Just estimate how much there's 8 over there and then move that with that. So there's 8 on that side as well. And then we can move it over there. To make it look nice, we can make it look square and almost equal and almost symmetrical. Okay, so that's uh, the basic structure of how it looks. Now, uh, you can either name it according to the data sheet or you can name it according to the Arduino pin names. I prefer to use the Arduino pin names because when I'm referring to it in, this, in schematic or programming, it makes it much easier to handle. So go ahead and start naming. Double click on it, on the pin, and you can start naming it. Display name is the how it displays, and then you have the designator, which is uh, what pin it re refers to, and that designator refers to the PCB pin. Okay, so display name we're gonna name it D4 for that one, and you can just follow along in naming each pin. I don't want to ground. I'm gonna speed up a little bit now, just to so it doesn't become tedious. You can follow along, or you can just copy the the picture I've posted in the resource. D7. P0, P1, P2. You move to P3, uh, to P4, and you can do the rest. A ref is basically an analog reference. A0 is analog pins, and A1 pins, D1 is your digital pins, just for those who don't know. SCL and SDA are your I2C lines, those you can have multiple devices on one bus. Okay, to have reset, you put those uh, backslashes. And you got D1, RX, and TX, those are your UART lines for communicating with your computer. But first they go to the FTDI, which converts those signals to USB signal. Okay, and then we just uh, go back, just make sure we correct in some, most of them. Uh, just make sure you got all the relevant ones. Basically the relevant function should show in the pin names. So, okay, I think we got most of them. Go around and double check. Okay, so we're almost done with this component. We just need to do one vital thing. Just save it. Saving is one of the most important things you should do regularly. Okay, so now we need to give this symbol some information. Basically, so we can identify it and call it up in, in the library. We're going to use most of the information from the RS uh, website. Uh, we enter schematic library. Edit. And call it U. Capital U. Question mark. Question mark uh, relates to the designator. It's basically a, a generic placeholder for the designators. So when we are assigning uh, designators in the future, it will it will help rename all of them at once. Okay, so we add uh, the information from comment. Um, we can add the title from the RS website, and we can do the same for 
description and symbol reference. With library link, you want to make it very easy to spot it. Okay, then you can add your name. So created by, put my name. And put the date created, just so you know when or how long your component is, or the history of your component. Or you can find if your component is outdated or not. But you are a stock number, this is the most important. It makes it much easier to generate a pool of materials. And basically it makes it much easier to buy your components. Okay, um, let's see what else we can add. Um, we can add organization if you want. I don't think it accepts the parameter. We can just put it as company. And I'll just put Lumina on Nova. And there you have it. I think that should be enough. Um, in the future, we shall add a footprint, but that we will do in the next lecture. Just click OK for now. And don't forget to save. OK, so you can see everything is updated over there. Let's see what else we can do. OK, so we've basically done for with part one of the disk of creating a component. For the mini pin components, it takes a while. But for the small components, it's quite easy and quite quick. So in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to create the footprint of this component. See you in the next lecture. Okay, so in the previous uh, lecture, we created the schematic component. In this lecture, we're going to create the PCB footprint and then join it. Okay, so we look at our schematic diagram of the component. We can bring up our data sheet. You can either check it up on the RS website or you can check it up on the data sheet. Okay, so in the data sheet, we look for the footprint. Now the footprint can be found right at the bottom. We need to check what package it is. And it comes in multiple packages, so you just need to find, make sure you find the right one according to the manufacturer's part number on the RS website. Okay, so we look closer, we see it, we have the atmega 328 pau And we can confirm this in, over there, PAU. And you can see this is a 32A, so that means this one here. You can see there's 32 pins, and we, now we're going to use this data to I want you to keep this data open and we're going to use it for getting the exact dimension of the PCB footprint let's drag this a little bit open so you can check it out ok so click on the PCB lab folder and if you go into project view you can see that click on place and sorry tools uh, IPC compliant footprint wizard. Now this wizard is basically a wizard that helps us to develop uh, footprints much easier because it has a template and we just need to input uh, variables into this template. Choose which one is appropriate. We can go down and see all the available ones. You can see that is a TQFP but we can also use the PQFP. Click next. And then we can see all the variables over here. Now we go up, we look at our length time spread of the from pin to pin. We put that, that's our lead span range. E and then we do the same for, for these ones. We got 9.25. Make sure your units are correct, we use millimeters. You can use inches if you want, but depends if the data sheet has it in inches or in millimeters. So we can just go ahead and fill in all, all these uh, variables. You can look at it from the table and then just fill it in.
Over here we see we have our, um, our 3D view. You can see it's not correct at the moment, but uh, it will soon be after we put in all the, all the parameters. Okay, pin location one, make sure that's on the right side. You make sure that it's on the side of D. Okay, next, um, make sure it's on the side of D. We click next and then we fill in the rest of them. We got B, go back to our data sheet. And we see it's 0 0.3. Make it 0 0.45. I suggest you have this document open or printed, so it makes it much easier to copy and to fill in all the details. Put in 0 0.45. We hit millimeters, and then do the same for yard. We, we have the minimum and maximum because of the thresholds that we found according to the table. Okay, we look, we, first we look on the, on the diagram and then we go to the table and then from there we see what goes where and then we compare it to the one in Altium. Okay, D1 is 0 0.9 and so, okay now we look for E1 and then fill that in 6.9 and 7.7, .7. sorry 7.1. Don't forget your millimeters. You can see the body is looking much, uh, much more accurate at the moment, but the pins, the f pin footprints are not looking that correct. This is because we have uh, the number of pins is incorrect. We change this to the side of E. So we have eight and eight. So let's just change it to eight and then that to eight. And then, then you can see now it looks more accurate. We just can rotate it around. I think with the right click. And then you can see we have our 32A uh, TQFB package. Then you click next, and then this is if you want to add a thermal pad. I don't do that, you can just click next. Uh, if you want to have package heal spacing, uh, that doesn't really matter in this case. If you're really, really particular about your design, then you can change these settings. But for now, you can just click next and continue. Next, over here I use this sometimes to if my pads are too too big or too small, I can adjust them just to make sure that everything's correct. But for now, we just use the calculated um, pad values. Click next. I just change it to 2D, and if I want to change the still screen width, I can change it over here. But it's really not necessary. That affects the side here. Okay, click next, and then click finished. You can skip most of these uh, if you don't want to. Okay, so we got our uh, GCP model. We can move it around and see that it looks more or less like how the component would look. Later, I'll show you how to go about uh, adding a proper 3D body to it. But for now, we can just um, play around with it, see how it looks. You can rotate it to put 0, 9, or 8. Okay, so we go back to the schematic library and we need to add footprint. Click browse and then it should be over there. Click OK. And now we have linked our PCB footprint to our schematic library. I want you to compile just to make sure there's no errors in design. Sometimes if there's a missing pin or if the pin is labeled incorrectly, it will give an error. Okay, so we need to go to system, see messages, click messages and drag it onto the side. Now we see that we have compiled successfully and that, have, that no errors have been found. 
we go to projects output for Atmel and then copy this this will be part of our library and then we copy this to our Dropbox folder delete the rest of the files Close the project so it doesn't interfere with our copy and pasting of the component. If we get an error, then no worries. We just go to libraries, libraries, uh, all installed. We delete all of this. We don't really need all of this. And then exit. Go back to the folder and then we can copy that. And then put it into our library. Go to project, add library, Dropbox, Ultimate Libraries, and then include that one. So now we can add it and drag it into our schematic for future use. But that will be covered in a later lecture. Thank you for watching. Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create diodes. This is, as I said, is an optional lecture. Uh, if you want to have all these components done for you, um, I have them in the resources section when we start the schematics. So, but if you want to try this out, you can check this lecture out. This is basically to help you create components when you're learning how to build your library. Okay, so as we go, uh, as we as we know, we're going to RS components. Uh, look for short key diode. 0.5 amps and 20 volts because that's according to the specification that we got from that PDF if you need a PDF it's there down in the resource section of this course okay select them in ascending order so that's basically in price wise and then we can choose one of the diodes that we require I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one Just wait for it to load. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go and create a new project, uh, Integrated Library, Schematic Library, and PCB Library. This is all standard procedure for every component you do. You can do this as fast as you can. I'm going to call it Panasonic Diodes. And then do the same for that, copy paste, and click OK. Do the same for PCB Library and Schematic Library. Okay, so that's the bare bones of creating components. Okay, we can add pins to it. Um, you can rename it to 2 and 2, but don't show it. You can rename this one to 1 and 1, but also don't show it. Okay, so save. Add a line. Now we're going to draw the diode symbol. And you can draw it as easy as that. But make sure your grid is on a certain certain one. I put on 10. Change it back to one more. Just so we can get it touching the lines. To change your grid, remember to press G on your keyboard. Okay, let's go to the data sheet just to check what's what we require in terms of uh, PCB component. Okay, you can see it goes from 2 down to 1. So this should be pin 2, and this should be pin 1. Okay, um, save, remember to save it as well. Okay, let's edit all the information, put it as the question mark. Uh, get all the, the information from here, Panasonic. Copy, 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 paste, paste, paste. And we add the main information, so I'm just going to speed this up. Created by me, um, date created, at the date, today's date. Add in all the other stuff, manufacturer, Panasonic, our stock number, the most important, so it makes it easy for your pull of materials. And manufacturer, part number, in case the RS number disappears, you can at least find the part number somewhere else. Data sheet URL, um, this is important also. So you don't have to keep browsing to where the component is or to find the data sheet. 
So just click on all and it's there. Okay, so now we don't want all of this information, we just want some of it, so we unclick the, some of this. And yeah, that looks much better and much cleaner. Okay, so we go to the IPC footprint wizard, um, like I showed you. Uh, we're going to create this one over here. Let's say we use this one here, the molded one. And our package is slightly different from the generic um, tupin, but I think we can, we can still use this one. Just make sure you got the correct dimensions. I'm going to put that as 1.7, 1.25, because there's no maximum or minimum, we're just going to put the typical, typical values. Okay, change this to 0 0.35 millimeters, make sure Make sure you always check your units in the data sheet, whether they're millimeters or inches. Uh, we just change the height of it to 0 0.7. And we can put it as mold diode. Okay, just click next. And then we see we have this one here. But it came up a bit off course. Uh, our T was not mentioned in the data sheet, so we can edit this manually. Basically, to check what's happening, you always have to check it in 3D to see if everything looks correct. Okay, so we're just going to split our pins just a bit further away, and then we're going to see it in 3D view, just to see that we've got it correct. We can make this shorter, because we, don't really, we really don't need it that long. It looks fine now, but I think it's a little bit too long. Okay, so this basically looks fine. We're going to add it to our footprint in our schematic view and we're going to compile. But first we save it. Click on system, get messages, messages basically tells us if there's uh, errors or not. Okay, go to explore, copy that into Dropbox, Altium libraries, and paste. And see, now we're building up our, our library. Okay, so I think that should be about it, just save it and you should be done. Okay, thank you for watching, see you in the next lecture. Hi guys, in this lecture we're going to be creating PCB headers and remember this is an optional lecture. So go to file, new, project, integrated library and then we create our schematic library and then we create our PCB library. And then for this one we need to get the RS stock number which is that one and this will give us those PCB headers that we can slide into our design. Okay, so go to add, uh, sorry, save project, and now we're going to save it as that name. Call it headers, PCB headers instead. And then we copy and paste that into, this, into the file name. Do this for all the other ones as well. Okay, and now we have our basic library, the bare bones of it. Okay, so first of all, we create the body of the connectors. We click, so the rectangle that we place, we can make it any size and you can adjust it always later on. Okay, so go to Google, type in Arduino Nano Schematic, and then we're going to click on that schematic as well. Over here, we can see what uh, pins are required. Keep this, you can either print this out or you can keep it on the side monitor. You'll basically need this as reference. So we add our pins and then I'm going to speed this up for a little while and then just to, so it's not monotonous. I'm 
I'm going to create from 1 down to 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. Just drag that down and then we're going to do the other side. Okay, so first let's edit all the details. Okay, you got your single row and created by, you can put wh whatever you want. I put my name over there. And then we've got date created, uh, 1st of March, and then manufacturer, uh, put that or so. Okay, and then RS stock number. Manufacturer part number, and then you can put that one in. So I'm just speeding it up a little bit, just so it doesn't become too monotonous. Okay, current rating, if you can put 3 amps, continuous. All these are basically extra. If you want to add in this, it uh, makes it more useful for the person reusing it. Also, you don't want all the stuff visible, so you just make them invisible. Just make sure you save it as well. Okay, so then I go to projects and then now we can create our PCB headers in the PCB um, view. So we start with a simple pad. Um, it's so small, we can't see that. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a small pad. Now we need to adjust it to how it's supposed to be. So we can call this designator 1 and then we're going to set that as reference. Okay, now we need to find out what um, the pitch is as well as um, the spacing. I'm just going to try and find the whole pattern. That's the recommended whole pattern that you can use. Basically gives you your dimensions. So this one says 1.02. That's the typical 0 0.08. So we're going to change this into millimeters. 1.1 moles for the whole size and for x that's basically the diameter 1.7 and then 1.7 for that as well I think let's just set it to 2 rather instead Okay, then paste special, uh, make sure you copy it and then we're going to paste a multiple of uh, 15. And just make sure we got our spacing right. Uh, that should be around 2.54 millimeters, which is basically an inch. That's okay, and then you can see we have our array pasted as well. Just make sure you delete the first one. It's somehow, for some reason, it duplicates itself. Okay, let's see what else we need to do. Um, okay, so now we can place our 3D body. But before we do that, we need to first place the line across our... Just to make sure that we don't cross any components across it. Basically, boundaries that we can see on the top layer, sorry, the top overlay. Okay, now you can see how this looks in 3D. It's looking good so far. Just make sure it's a little bit uh, on the sides. Doesn't have to be that accurate. Now we place the 3D body, and then um, I'm sure we can get to somewhere on 3D central as well. But we need to know the height of this thing as well. Okay, let's look at the dimensions. We're going to look for the one that we are using. We make the 5.84. That's the, our overall height. And we can change the color to something. Uh, let's see what color we can. That's good for us. Let's use that gray. 
Okay, so at the moment we're making a generic um, 3D body for this one. At the later stage, we will just add in our 3D body. The final version should have the full 3D model of the pins. We just zoom in a little bit there and we can take it out. Just make sure it's aligned. But we need to have this on the bottom because the pins will basically be at the bottom for Arduino Nano. Just make sure it's nice and aligned. And we can see that nicely in 3D. If you basically don't have um, the 3D model, you can always use the uh, generic 3D block. Okay, so now we're going to just rename this to headers and put in our 5.84 and that will be single inline headers. Click OK and then go to save. Okay, so in schematic view, let's see what else we need to do. Um, now we add in our 3D body, our footprint. And then we just add that to our schematic view. Okay, make sure we compile it. And once it's compiled, we'll see if we have any errors. We've got no errors, so all is good. Okay, so now we go to explore and then look for the project and that's basically uh, all we have for that one. Okay, so just copy that and then paste. Now we're going to make the other uh, programming headers now. Okay, so just rename that to programming headers, dual pro, and then this will be program ISP. We can even copy that as well. Now, this is what we're going to use for the uh, Arduino programming pins. We should save that. I've just uh, sped things up along just to make sure that it's not too monotonous. Uh, you can delete all these pins. We don't need all of them. Just all the essentials. We just need six pins. And then we can shrink this rectangle. save and now we go into look for our mk2 pin out it's a av isp sorry iv sorry avr isp and now we need to see the orientation of the uh, programming pins okay so just ring it meso sck reset uh, we got VCC and Mozzie and Ground. Just move that in place. Just make sure you got the right numbers, otherwise you're gonna have big problems at the late stage. I'm just gonna make this space it out a bit better. Make it SEK and then that one reset. Number two, make VCC and this is Mozzie. And then we got Ground. Okay, so everything looks good so far. Just going to space it out a little bit better and bring it to the center. Okay, let's see what else we have. We're going to add that. We need to add the PCB layout of it. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the PCB footprint. So we're going to duplicate that one and then let's just uh, rename this to ISP header. And then we can just say for programming. Let's so make this a small letter and then click OK. Okay, so we just need six um, pads for this uh, for this footprint. So I'm just going to take this out and then duplicate it according to the spacing. That's also 2.54 in the Y domain. Okay, so I just went overboard. I should supposed to only make um, uh, a duplicate of that instead of 15. 
So do the same procedure and then change the item count to 2. And that one's fine. Okay, now it went a bit offset, but that should be fine. We can just move our main stuff there and delete that. Our boundary, we can just copy, cut, and paste. And just place it directly over there and create our nice little boundary. Just place it over there. Okay, so let's see what else we need to do. Uh, go into Google, search for MK2 pinout again, or the AVR ISP. And then we'll go ahead and look at pinouts just to make sure we get it right. Okay, see where the first pin is as well. Okay, so everything's confirmed. Okay, and then make that pin 3. Okay, we can just rotate it again, and then we're almost done. Let's make sure you save it. And then we go to project, compile, compile again, and then we go to this project, and then now we need to add in the PCB footprint, and then we can do that. And as I said, you can get the 3D uh, footprints as well. Okay, so uh, we compiled and we got an error, so let's just go back and see what, what happened. So we got two sets of three uh, designated, so that's supposed to be five. Okay, just save it again, and then this was nice about Altium, it will tell you about that. So just remove that footprint and then re-edit again. Okay, compile, recompile, and then we see we have compiled successfully. Go to explore and then uh, go to PCB int libraries. That'll copy both um, the headers that we have created and then copy it into your Dropbox Altium libraries folder. Okay, and that should be done. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. In this lecture, I'm going to teach you about how to add 3D bodies to your components. So I'm sure you've seen how detailed the 3D visualization was for the demonstration. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so first of all, you see we have our ultimate libraries. Uh, we're going to start with the at mega. Okay, so first of all, we open it up, we go into the PCB. And you can see it looks like quite a dull 3D rendering of the Atmega 328. Now we're going to beef this thing up now, beef this thing up now. Okay, so what I want to do is to go into 3D Content Central. Just Google it up and then that's the first link. Click on that. And then you can see this site has a ton of 3D bodies. So first you need to log in before you continue. So pause this video and then come back. Okay, so welcome back. Okay, then we go to page 24. And then this is where you see the package information. And you can see what package we use for the Atmega. Okay, so I assume that you've uh, registered. We're going to click over here and write QFP32. And then click on search. And then you can see we can use this first one. And it has a 0 0.8 pitch. If you compare that to your data sheet, you can see that it's, it should be correct. Just make sure you log in before we go any further. You need to log in before you get into this page. Over here, you click uh, on that step file because uh, Altium can only take in step files. Then you can download it. 
and then save your file. Yeah, you don't really need to get it zipped, depending on what you want, if you want it zipped or not. But I prefer not to zip it. Open it. Uh, unzip it if you got it zipped. And then copy it into your 3D library. If you don't have a 3D library, then I suggest you click new and rename it 3D files and copy it into that. Okay, so now let's get back into Altium and now we need to import this 3D body. Go to generic step model, embed step model, go to the place where your, your 3D file is stored. In Dropbox in this case, Ultimate Libraries, 3D Libraries, and the first one that you have. Okay, and then you can see how awesome it looks. You just need to drag it in place. Make sure that it's level with the pads. Uh, press 2 and then drag it into place in 2D view. I find this quite simple. You can delete also the old model just by clicking on it and deleting. You can see how awesome it looks in 3D view. Uh, if you can change the rotation, you can change it like that. You double click and then change the rotation in X and Y or Z. Uh, this X is a bit messed up, so that's why it's going too far. So, but uh, that's just the basics of how to manipulate the object in case it's not in the right orientation. And the standoff height also you can raise it to two. you can raise it to anything you want depending if it's too low or too high on, uh, and not flush with the pads. I'm just going to set it to zero and then put it back on. You can also make it trans transparent if you if you wish. This is in case you want to see if there's any components or any vias that it's uh, that's conflicting underneath. It makes it much more easier to handle when you have a complex board. So just line it up. I'm just going to you can put it on auto graphic, uh, which makes it much easier to manipulate. So set it to opaque so that it looks like how it's supposed to. And then finally, we can add it to our footprint model. And you can see how awesome it looks. It looks much better than the generic 3D body that we had before. Compile. Just make sure you save changes. And then once compiled, you can add it back to your library. Cut. And copy. And then you can delete that original folder, the compilation folder. If it says uh, try again, then you need to exit Altium and try again. And then you can go back into Altium. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for this lecture. Uh, in the next one, we're going to show you how to draw the schematics. It's the beginning of how we develop our Arduino from start to finish. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to get started with the schematic. Now, if you haven't done the previous lectures uh, regarding the designing of the components, I suggest you just, uh, you can either go back to them or you can uh, just copy the libraries in the resource section of this course. So basically, I've included all the libraries that you need to create your Arduino, your own Arduino Nano, which makes it much simpler for you, depending on what you want. If you want to get more in-depth view of uh, creating components, then I suggest you do the, those op optional lectures. Otherwise, um, you can just use the ones in the resource section, just download them, and then I'll show you exactly how to use them in this, in this lecture. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first of all, this is our schematic that we're gonna be following. Uh, you can look, it'll look more or less uh, like this, but we'll make it unique in some, some parts. You can see that over there, you got your Arduino, your FTDI over there. and your Atmega, the main, the brains of the chip. Uh, 
Okay, so hopefully you imported everything. I want you to remove anything in installed. Add library and we're going to select all of this in our Dropbox folder. Ultim libraries and then select all of that. And then you should have all your libraries. Okay, so I want you to go to libraries at mega and the atmol microcontrol you can select it. That is where we're going to start off and we're going to add. Okay, so save. Make sure you're on main Arduino schematic dot schematic doc. Project template, uh, we're going to change the size of, of our page so we can fit all our components. And we'll do this for all sheets. Okay, just center that right over there. Okay, so let's see what else we can do next. Okay, so let's start with this section over here. Okay, so we go to libraries, select the uh, RS components, capacitors. And then basically what you need to do is just look out for what we need. We got 18 picofarad and we got the 100 nanofarad. And then we also have the four microfarad. Just drag most of these on according to the, according to the data sheet. Now a problem that will uh, pop up, uh, but you can correct this in component view, is the description that keeps on popping up. You can make that invisible or not visible. Okay, drag on the crystal. Uh, let's see what else we can add on. Uh, let's add on our tactile switch that we'll use for re reset. Okay, so we got. With those components, let's see what else. Okay, we got our crystal. Um, okay, let's put our resistor array there. Okay, that'll be used for the RX and TX and as well as for the other components that require it. Okay, so let's go to what are we missing? Okay, there we go. Okay, let's start with the LEDs now. We'll drop in the orange. Let's see what we got. We got okay, let's go back to capacitors. We can have that 100 nanofarad. Just make that uh, not visible. Just click the checker box. Okay, and I think we have most of the components for, for this section, so let's uh, create, click on that VCC over there, the small icon, that'll give us our 5 volts. Okay, in this part we're going to put our FTDI USB chip, make that not invisible, and this one could get a little bit tricky, but let's see how it goes. We want to add in our 0805 standard 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors. If you want to rotate components, just make sure you sp press space. If you see the red errors next to each of the components, don't worry about that. We'll get rid of those when we assign designators to them. Okay, then we add the red. Add the green, and let's see what else we got. We're gonna add the micro USB connector. Now, according to the original uh, Arduino Nano, they have a, a mini USB. Ours will be much smaller, so we will have much more space, you know, on our board. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Let's bring our uh, data sheet in. Okay, we can go over here. 
You can have five volts, make a copy of that on both sides. You can make a copy of the ground. Click on libraries and then we go into RS component capacitors and then copy some capacitors. Okay, take out the 4.7 microfarad as well as the 100 nanofarad. Those are our decoupling capacitors. And over here we take out our programming ISP component or ICSP in this case. And then we need to put in our regulator. So we look for TI Texas Instruments Load Dropout Voltage Regulator. Okay, and then we just make that tag invisible. Put VCC. And 5 volt. We bring in the LED. That is a power on LED. And put the ground there. Okay, let's see what else we have to do. We need to still put in our header pins. Okay, this one double click, click on not visible or uncheck visible. Copy and paste, press X to flip horizontally. Okay, let's see. I think we got more or less all the components on our sheet. See what else we can do before we root all the wires. Okay, we got the 5 volt over there. Uh, we got our header pins, we got our power. Let's just change this one, change VCC into VIN. Uh, let's copy that and paste it down here. Control and V. Put another one and put in, call it 3v3 or 3.3 volts. And then I think that should be it. We should ha now have all our components on the sheet. Okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to wire our components and then we're going to use net labels also to create a wire routing. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Okay, so now we are in wiring components and using net, uh, net labels. This is part one. Okay, so in this lecture, we got all the components on our sheet. Now we need to just um, wire them up so that we, they can be connected. This connection basically uh, carries on into the PCB view and it will help connections in that view also. Okay, so let's get started. So we just bring that up, we see what needs to be wired from our data sheet. Okay, so we're gonna start, we're gonna move things around, just make sure things are optimized. Uh, things will be different from the data sheet because we um, created our symbol a bit different. We created similar to um, how the components in actual life, and basically it depends on your preference. Okay, so we start with the reset button. We can add um, our net labels. So instead of wiring it up straight, which makes it untidy, we can use net labels. So if the two net labels are basically uh, are the same, uh, that means that they are connected. So reset and reset are now connected because they have the same net name. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. We're gonna start with our crystal. Let's bring this over closer to XTAL1 and 2. We're gonna Connect, click on the connect wire, bring it up. 
and bring that down. Try and make it as convenient as possible. Connect it to one and then connect it to XDLA, XDAL2. The bottom one is basically connected to ground. Uh, some of this is getting in our way, so we're gonna get we're gonna disable it so we can't see it. You can basically use any capacitor from five picofarads to say around twenty-five picofarads. So basically, the bottom pins of the crystal they get connected to ground. Now, a problem is that um, we connect to the side and not in a four-way junction, because sometimes you can get confused whether the whether the wires are connected or not. So for that reason, we create only three-way junctions instead of four-way junctions with the wires. Now we can shift this and press Control to move it up so without breaking any wires. If you do, if you don't press Control, then you see what happens. Okay, so I think we have most of the components here. I think we just need to do a ref now. Click on the wires, click on ARF, and let's see what we can do with this. Connect the capacitor, we we'll try it to the end. Now you can see we have that uh, ball joint over there, because that ball joint uh, shows basically a junction. Okay, so let's uh, create a label for ARF. We create, type that out as ARF. Create wires, we're gonna copy this and then Control C to copy this to the other ones. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, copy and paste. And then you can copy the nets and then uh, we can change it to the relative ones. A7, A0, A1, sorry, A2, A3, A4, and A5. We're going to do these ones, okay? Put a ground there. Do you want to hook up the ground and the VCC wise as well? You can shift the, um, the capacitor designator aside. Okay, so let's see what we can do. We can just we're gonna rotate with space, connect the ground, and then connect the ground to the other other point. And then we can connect it to the other node. We do the same with VCC, connect two VCCs together, and this one will go to uh, 5 volts. So we'll just go over there, click over there, VCC, hook it up, and then rename it to 5 volts. Okay, we can bring this capacitor over here. So we've got the 100 nanofarads with the 4.7 microfarads, you can hook them up. Okay, and then that we can put to crown, copy and paste. Okay, and let's see what else we do. Hook up uh, AVCC to 5 volts. And for the rest of them, I think those will go to the headers. So we're not going to rule them out entirely, we're going to create the uh, net names for them as well. Let's copy that. And paste, control and V. We change that. And you can do the same for D1. Change it to RX. T1. 
dx that one and then d2 I want you to follow along as I go along, naming the nets on the pins. Okay, so just do that, and I'm going to just speed this up a little bit just to uh, make things not so tedious. D6, D7, D9. Then the eleven slash mozzy, the twelve slash missile. Okay, so I think we got more or less the stuff we need. This uh, king bright orange LED, I think we'll put it in a separate section uh, later on. But for now, let's just hook it up here. We can either hook it up like that, um, but I think it will be better if we kept it separately because we need a resistor on that. And that resistor we can is it uh, our resistor array, so we can move all our LEDs right over here, including the ground. Okay, you can hook that up. And from there we have our net coming along there, that's D13 slash SCK. And we can make that straight. Press control just to drag it up. And we can move this in the corner. Press visible. Okay, so um, basically I'm trying to drag this into the corner, we can't do that because we have its uh, origin name, they're stuck in a corner. Okay, now we Got that right okay so in the next lecture we're going to be basically continue with all the wiring uh, we've done the heart of it which is the arduino mic microcontroller next we need to do the ftdi chip and all the other necessary components okay so i'll see you in the next lecture okay so welcome back to wiring schematics and using net labels part two okay in this one we're going to finish off all the other components we're going to try and through the FTDI, the in-circuit programmer, and regulator. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get through it. Okay, so let's see where to start. We're going to start with the FTDI since it has one of the most pins. Okay, let's just have a good look at it to see what we need to do. Okay, so first of all, we're going to put things in perspective. Just get it 5 volts to be connected to VCIO. It has a bit of a, it has a pole joint. We need to get rid of that. Connect VCC to 5 volts as well. And then we just extend DXT. Extend DTR and connect it to the capacitor. That one's connected to reset so we can just use the same net label from there. Sometimes you have to move it out to extend it. Makes it easier sometimes. It's a bit tricky but it can be done. Okay, um, let's connect our net labels. We should rename this to, put it in capitals, DX. And we we'll call it RX. Now uh, we will have to rename this at the least stage, but I'll show you the reason why. Okay, so for now we place the, these X's to show that they are un unconnected. So the person soldering these components can see that they're not connected. Okay, so we join all the crowns together. There's a G and D, ground one, ground two, ground three of the FTDI chip. Okay, so let's see what else. Uh, the LEDs will bring down because they need to be connected over here. Oops, it's my second ground. Okay, so let's just try figuring this out. Try and make it as neat as possible.
we're gonna put the colors we're gonna put make sure it's the orange so we can see what colors which and then we can move them accordingly we'll do the same with the the red yeah. we don't need to do the red because it's already done okay let's just try try this layout for a moment add in the green and I think we can add in the blue as well let's go get the blue and put it over there okay let's see how we can maneuver this so it will all be neat so we're going to connect all of them remove that and connect it first to the orange then we do the red see that's connected so we need to get move it out of the way and then move from move that pin 7 connect the pin 7 to green and blue to pin 8 we can extend all of them and we can connect them to ground all right you can just double check the, um okay so let's just uh, see we connect okay so what i'm going to do is we're going to copy these copy the wires we're going to basically copy and paste an array okay so just delete that uh, let's just start again copy that smart paste uh paste it itself put the spacing as zero the column space is zero and put the rows as 10 and count as it okay so that didn't work out exactly as we wanted but it did work that's how it, that's if you have a lot of um, um, pins and you need to copy a lot of wires onto them this the smart base will really help quite a bit just copy those again red dash rx for red green dx that's uh, basically Rx is received, Tx is transmit for those that don't know. And then we copy that to our uh, FTDI device. Okay, let's see what else we need. Okay, so we see that we made a mistake. Uh, we supposed to connect two of those to five volts and the other to, other two to ground. Okay, so let's just correct that quickly. Just delete that. I think it's the red and the green. We're gonna press space to move it up. Make sure you got it in the right direction as well. Connect that to green. Connect that to the red, and then we create a five volt source. Rename it to five volt and then bring it down. Delete that uh, net antenna. Okay, and just copy that, uh, bring that in, and then we can move the ground in. Okay, so I think we have, we should be happy with this. And you can just move it a little bit into the corner, so it's out of the way. Okay, so you can press X or Y to flip the USB connector. If you press it on your keyboard, then it will flip it either horizontally or vertically. You can connect the USB data minus and the USB data plus to, to the spins RX and TX. And we've got uh, NC stands for no connection, so we put a X over there. Connect our power, make that the USB. So there's power coming from the USB. And connect our ground. Connect our 
press down and press control to move it up and then we have a voltage 3, 3 volt 3.3 3 volts or 3v3 connect it out okay so this one we can move it in a corner to make it slightly neat and then make sure our resets are also there okay so it's looking much more connect interconnected now um okay so we've done quite a bit we've We've wired up the Arduino microcontroller, we've done the FTD device, we've done the LEDs. So what's remaining is just basically the headers, the voltage regulator, as well as a few of the other components that we still need to do. Okay, so I shall see you in the next lecture. See you then. Okay, so welcome back to wiring components and using net labels part 3. Okay, so I promise this is going to be a short lecture. Um, won't be as long as the other ones, we just need to do a few things to clean up uh, and connect all the other components. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, let's see what's left. We have these decoupling capacitors. It basically prevents long loops in your circuit uh, that may create unwanted inductances and capacitance. Okay, then we go on to the in-circuit programmer so that we go up somewhere around yeah yeah there we go okay move that to the side we can connect vcc to 5 volts connect that to ground and then we got mozzie copy and paste miso SEK and reset. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so basically we need to connect uh, these ones to that. So we've got those three. Move that up as well as reset. And here's a little trick. Um, we're going to copy them as net labels and alpha numeric so it doesn't copy by location. Okay, we just try that again. Move that there. Okay alphanumeric and disable enable the, and disable that okay so as you can see that they are not copied in location they copied alphanumerically the reset and then we have all of them so I think we should be done with the programming headers let's see where else we can go to okay and we got a 5 volt voltage regulator so Basically what it does, it takes in volt, any voltage from say around 3.3 volts to around say 18 volts. Okay, so, so depending on the voltage that your voltage regular can take, um, it will output a constant 5 volts no matter what. Okay, we can put it as VUSB. I think we should, um, I might change this at a later stage. Okay, so um, it looks a bit bland. Um, let's see what else we can do. I say I say that we move this over here because this here will go in conjunction with our regulator. Our power supply will basically have all the decoupling capacitors. We can move this out a little bit. Okay, and let's see what else we can do. Just looking at our schematic. Okay, so we're going to connect it to ground. And then we need one to our LED. We can label it LED underscore blue. And we can copy this and bring it over here. So all our LEDs are at the moment labeled. 
looking at our uh, schematic. We are not going to implement the 5 volt uh, auto select them. Uh, we don't really need that. And the 5 volt air and the 5 volt analog reference. We, we're not going to implement this, uh, that as well. We don't really, really need that. And personally, in my use, I've never used it. Okay, so let's connect the rest of our uh, resistor array. We, we don't need one of them. So that's number four. We copy D1, Tx, and R, R0, Rx. And then we connect that as well on the other side. Okay, so I see we made a mistake. It's just supposed to be D0 forward slash Rx. Okay, so that means that we need to rename those as well, which I've told you about. Okay, so we need to place those as well. And then we just extend these wires and put a X over there. Just to mark that nothing's connected to those. Okay, then we have our header pins. We need to connect those. I'm going to extend the wires and I'm, we're going to do a smart paste. Let's move it out a little bit. Make it a bit longer and then let's do our smart paste. Copy. Um, copy as themselves. Enable paste array and then count, say about 15. And columns, you want one. Okay, see, that one worked perfectly. Got an extra one over there. Just copy and paste. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to copy all of these nets. We're going to bring them over here and then we're going to sort them out just now. Copy all those, it's going to be quite hard. Just shift to deselect as well. It can be tricky sometimes. Okay, but copy that and then just delete that Arduino, makes it much easier. Bring it all down. And then we can start moving it according to how it is on our Arduino Nano. Bring the ground pin. And then these ones we can just copy it straight, which makes it much easier. That one is D4 actually, as you can see from that. Uh, copy a reset pin. And now ground. This one goes up to V in or V USB. We have our three volt power supply. Um, and we don't. I don't think we really need a three. Okay, let's take that out. Okay, and then we connect our analog pins. We're gonna cut, paste as net labels, and then disable that. And then you can see everything is in alpha numeric. Um, that one should be 5 volts and then we have the 3.3 3 volt um, net should be down there. Okay, let's see. I think we've more or less done. I think, yes, we are done. Okay, so we have done quite a lot in these past three lectures. We have wired up all the schematics. I'm sure hopefully by now you understand how to wire up your components. Alright, so in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to keep things neat. Okay, I shall see you then. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to try and keep things neat. Let me show you exactly what I mean about that. So basically, in schematic view, we have components all over the place. Now, this can be a problem if you're trying to figure out what, part, what component belongs to which subsystem. So in this lecture, I'll show you how to keep things neat, place them in lines, place them in borders, and keep components segregated from each other. Okay, so you can see things are a bit messy over here. Uh, I want you to go to place and then drawing tools and then click line we're basically going to draw a line to segregate some of these subsystems click over there and then click over there just click that box it up and that should be fine sometimes it doesn't click you have to double click on that and zoom out uh, let's just uh, box this one I 
I think just move it a little bit into the corner so it looks much more neater. Okay, get the line again and then we draw a line. You can adjust your grid if, uh, depending on what you want to do. You do the same on this side. Just move it just that side there. This one we can move it into this corner over here. Or this corner. Click on drawing lines, tools, and then we just draw it down. Making that nice and neat. Okay, with this one, I want you to move it somewhere over here. I want, to move this, I want you to move it right over here. I think later we'll integrate this into... I think what we can do is we can rather integrate this into the regulator socket. This would be much more efficient use of our space. And then we can just draw one going into ground. We can just adjust these wires. We don't want to have these dry joints over here. And then you can just straighten up so everything looks much more neater. Bring that down. And then we can just extend these wires. Okay, so we got that. That's, that's part of keeping things neat, is to have the components more or less uh, in line. Okay, so go ahead and draw a line around this small component. This is the resistor array. Okay, and then we have this one over here. This one, I think we can just make it smaller, just a little. Just make it a little more compact. Remember to press Control to drag it without disconnecting it. Do the same with this one, but we did not select that. Undo, and then just drag and just pull it down. Okay, so that one we can just bring it a little bit closer. And I think we can go ahead and draw a line around it. Create like a small box. Double click. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see it's looking much more neater. Let's see what else we have to do. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do, since it's all neat, we're going to label what each subsystem is. The reason for labels is that it makes it much easier to see what each subsystem is. So this text, you can double click on it. Okay, so you can adjust the font, you can make it a little bit bigger. I think we should change it a little bit, make it much bigger, make it bold even. And there we go, it looks, I think that should be fine. Well, let's make it, you can just change the, the text now. Call it programming header slash ISP. And we can call it programming header brackets ISP. Just copy and paste so we don't have to redo the, the font. You can change it to voltage regulator. Copy that, and then we go into this, we can call this, let's double click, let's move that over here, and call it resistor array. Copy that over, and this one will be for the, this is the FTDI system, basically converts your UART signals into USB. This also helps you to uh, communicate with the device, to debug it, and see what else is up with your device. Call it FTDI USB comms. Because that's basically what it is. It helps you get communication, and it helps you to program your Arduino. 
for this one we'll call it LED indicators and then we have uh, our headers these are external headers that are going to the operate board you can just call it headers or header pins And then last but not least, we can call this our Arduino microcontroller. Now if you look at it, you can see it's much more neater. You can see what the subsystem is what, and it makes, basically makes things much easier to look at. Okay, so in the next lecture, we shall cover compiling and assigning designators. Thank you for watching. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to annotate designators and compile the project. Uh, this is quite important when you have multiple errors that are being shown. I'm sure you've seen those red lines that have been uh, under the components. To get rid of them, we need to make them unique. We can either rename this question mark to S1, and you can see the error has disappeared from there. So an easy way to do this is to annotate the schematics autonomously. So to do this, we can go under tools, annotate schematics quietly, and that's very easy to get all 20, 24 designators done all at one time. And you can see all the errors have been removed. All the components have also been renamed. So you can see the C1, you can see all the, everything has been renamed. We want to save this and save all. Go to project, compile. Now this will show if there's any errors in the design. So it minimizes the risk that you take when you get your PCB made. Okay, so one problem that came up was duplicate designators for our pin names. We can change this by double clicking. Just changing it to two and two and make sure leaving one and one is the same. Go to or save and then compile. Compile error is empty, and then in messages, we see that our project has compiled successfully. If you get any errors, you can change it in design errors, but I'll show that in a future lecture. Okay, so in the next section, I'm going to show you how to do PCB design. We're going to be designing the PCB board, we're going to define the board shape, we're going to make it look almost like the Arduino Nano, but we're going to make it slightly better. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Uh, welcome back. And now in this lecture, we're going to define the board shape of a PCB. This is the defining point in creating your PCB for your Arduino. Okay, so we compile the design and we can see there's no errors. Okay, there's one error. And this is because LED blue is connected to the 5 volt and therefore we've got two nets that are connected together. So we delete that one move to the side and then we change this to 5 volt instead of LED blue. Let's click on that, wire it up and then we try and compile again. Project compile, project compile again and you can see there's no design errors, thank god. <laughs> okay, to take out design from schematic to PCB mode you click on design and update PCB document to click execute changes. This will see what's different in the PCB um, file and compare it to the schematic document. And then take all, this, all the components from the schematic view and place it into PCB mode. So all, here's all our um, components. You can see it's green, some of green because there's errors there. Okay, so before we add all these components on, we first need to define our board shape. You can see these are all the main components. Okay, so click zero to center everything, nine to move it around, eight to have a perspective, orthographic view. Okay. So this black part is our, our PCB board. Save everything. Okay, so now we're going to look for mechanical layer. Uh, we're going to use mechanical layer as our board shape layer. 
we so click on place we can use line and we can use this line to define our board shape okay so you can move that around and you can see it, how it adapts and uh, we can press shift and space to change the orientation of the line you can either make it straight you can make it round curved or just q okay, so now we want to make it similar to how the arduino nano is so we're going to make two lines these lines are just uh, random random lengths but we we can change the board shape we're going to change the lines the shape of the lines just now if you go to if you google site of arduino nano you can see that it's 0 0.73 inches by 1.70 inch you can convert this um in google or in any convert to millimeters if you want if you work in millimeters We're going to use inches for in this case but first we need to set our origin this is very important okay, double click on it we can keep the width the same and we can change this to 1700 that's similar to 1.70 inches we're going to change this to One seven zero, and then we can change that to one seven zero as well. The X we can change to seven three zero. So that gives us the length of the Arduino. We just copy these two lines, and instead of creating the lines again, we just copy them, and then we can paste them right on the vertices. Okay, so that's our board shape. Now let's converge the, the actual board shape to, to this mechanical layer. Click design, board shape, define board shape from selected objects. And you can see the whole thing shrinks to the shape of the board. And you can press uh, 3 to go into board shape view or to 3D view. And then you can see how we have the small board that we can use out. We're going to create our design too. You can rotate it around and then you can see we can change the color of it, change it to black. You can change it to blue, you can change it to quite a variety of colors. Okay, so thank you for watching this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to check how to place components. We're going to place them in such a way that uh, it will make things much easier for us. But I'll see you in the next lecture. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to be going through placing the components in PCB view. So in the last lecture, we defined the board shape. So what I want you to do is press 1, 2, 3, and then you can see through different views. Bring all the components close. And you can see a lot of errors there. The green and the circles uh, show basically show errors. And you can see there's more green errors over there. Okay, so ignoring the errors for now, I want you to start with the headers at the moment. And set it as reference. The reason we set it exactly is because we want it to fit on the breadboard. And we want it to be exact. Okay, so if those errors are getting to you, you can just go into Tools and then click Reset Error Markers. And that should clear up all your errors. Okay, so place it into one position. We're going to set our reference again. We're going to set it up in that corner. Move it a little bit up. Try and get it as equal as possible between length of the PCB. Click set as reference now, and then let's see if we can duplicate it. Copy and click on that as origin, and then paste special. 
paste array. And then we just want two duplicates and we want this to be our exact number, which will be 600 moles. Actually put that in the X spacing instead of the Y. Otherwise you get it vertical. And now you see we have an exact copy. You can delete this one. Normally it creates a duplicate on the origin as well. We can make this S5 because we do not have a component that is S6. Okay, then we move our at mega. Let's place it over there. And you can see they got it at uh, quite a cool angle. We can do the same cool angle as well. We can go into that, we can place rotation. So we're going to PCB inspector and we put it as 45 degrees. And to rotate, you can just press space. Just uh, take note of where that um, dot is. The dot basically indicates where pin 1 is. If you go to 3D view, you can check it out. The dot is basically facing away from the USB. Press 2 and then we want to put it away from there. We're going to put our USB at the bottom so this is in the right position. Okay, just, just do this again to make sure that all our components are still there. Okay, so you can see that we have a, f a few problems with our um, with our header. It's not matching up exactly. So in order to get it right, we're going to have to rotate this. Let's take it out, rotate it, and then we can put it back at our origin. So we know it's at the exact position. You can see the lines leading up to our microcontroller. So basically this makes it easier to root our microcontroller because they just basically straight lines. No need to use any vias or holes going through the PCB. Okay, so uh, we need to add those few components also. We're going to add our, our in-circuit programmer header. We're going to add that in. It should be in the right position. Okay, let's see what else. Our USB, we're going to put it on top. One button you should not press is X. X basically mirrors the component. And if you mirror it, you're going to have a bad time when you're fitting the components on in real time. We can change the color to blue. I think it looks much cooler in blue. You can see the general overview of how it looks. Those pins are a little bit too long, uh, I know. Um, in a later lecture, I'll show you how to replace them. For now, we shall use the long 3D model legs. Okay, we can put the crystal. Let's change it to 45 degrees in PCB inspector. We can just move it around there. Uh, you can see the designators S4, S2, S5, and U2, and X1. Uh, we're going to make them smaller soon, and we're going to clean them up uh, at the later stage. Okay, so we're going to put our resistor array, move that up, and then our, and basically our four diodes. We're just going to bundle them up now, and then just copy them straight into it. By the way, if you're asking, um, that red area is called a room. If you move that red rectangular, you're going to move all the components that are in that room. In this case, we just have one sheet, and that one sheet is everything. So we're going to move all the components. If okay, move that a little bit up. You can see we save a lot of space by using micro USB instead of mini USB. Okay, so let's just move that closer. I love getting everything as close as possible so it makes it easy to manipulate. That's our FTDI uh, chip. And this, uh, let's see if we can move this closer. Okay, so you can see that we have selected the wrong footprint. We need to go into our schematic and update this footprint. 
double click on it. Over here we have the right footprint. Um, the true hold is not the right one. We need to choose the surface mount one. Okay, and then we put change that. Change the designated to S1. And then basically do a compilation. This is just a thing that needs to be changed whenever you have time. You need to change this uh, designators to 2 and 2. So the pins are different names instead of the same name. That's the error that it's giving. You can just update the design and you can see the few things are changed. Press close. You can see the one component got deleted. Okay, if you now look at it, we have a nice uh, switch over there. That's our reset switch. It's way smaller than the previous one. Okay, so let's see what else we can do on the top layer. Okay, now I want you to drag this and press L. L basically changes it to the next layer. Press space to get it on the right orientation. And if you look at it, if you go underneath, you can see that it that the component is underneath. And you can do that just by pressing the, the keyboard shortcut L. If you can look there at the picture, it's on the other side. So that dot needs to be away from the USB or towards the microcontroller. Okay, so press Shift S and this will take us to an isolated view of our PCB. In order to get all the designators, we want to make it small as possible. Click on one of them, find similar objects, we look at, um, we go to designator, same, click OK, and it will select all the designators. And then on the side here, instead of stroke font, we click true type font. True type font will basically make it all smaller and it makes it more convenient to see what it is and doesn't take too much space. Let's move it all closer. Um, in the cleaning part of the PCB uh, lecture, we're going to be going through how to clean up all this. Shift S again. And then we're going to move our regulator, we're going to move it at the bottom. Let's just move it over there. You can rotate it with spacebar. At the moment, you can just place it anywhere in any rotation that you wish because uh, at a later stage, we're going to re we're going to start routing all the components and from there, we'll decide what orientation it needs to be. Okay, so move those over there. We can just put it under the microcontroller. Ideally, if you, have, if you have a big board, it's best to put the common components of a subsystem all close together. So each component of a subsystem, you group it as close as possible so there's less um, interference. And also makes routing very easy. Okay, now we're doing all our capacitors. Let's see where we can fit those. We're going to move that, uh, we press L to send it to the back layer, or the bottom layer, and we put it there by the regulator. Let's move the uh, rotate that but there so we have more space there. Move this also down. Move that over there. C2. I think we can fit over there. So this is not exactly like the Arduino Nano, but this is uh, optimal for what we're doing for our board. We take these ones and press L to send it to the bottom layer. Move it across, I think we can fit it right over here. We've got some space here next to the micro USB, so might as well use that space. Let's rotate them into place. And I think we just got one more component left. That is C1. 
that I think we can move right in the middle over there. Okay, so I think we've uh, got all the components on the board. So the next step I think is to start routing the components. Uh, maybe there'll be a few um, placements around. And then we can see what we can do from here. If you want to change it from perspective to orthographic view, to do that you can press N, click that over there, and go from perspective to orthographic. And now I'm sure you can see the difference in the PCB. And then look at our board now. We are almost there, I think about um, 65 to 70% away. Um, there's still some work to do with that before we can get this board manufactured. But I think so far so good. Uh, we have all the pins. Um, the only thing that might be of concern is that regulator, which is not exactly on the pad. We can change it uh, ourselves in the component view. But I think uh, I shall leave that for later lecture. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, I think that should be fine for now. Um, in the next lecture, we shall go through the routing and other routing. I'll show you exactly what you need to do to connect all the components together. Okay, thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. Okay, so here we get to the fun part. We're going to be doing routing. Now, personally, I enjoy routing. It's very calming. <laughs> but uh, for you, I think it'll, you'll really enjoy doing this. So what I'm going to teach you is basically how to root from component to component and how to auto root. Now if you have a big board, it's going to take forever to manually root it and if you look at it, it's basically like a visual puzzle that you need to solve. So what I'm getting at is that at sometimes you need to use auto routing, but remember, auto routing is not perfect. It will come up with a lot of errors that you need to debug eventually and I'll show you how to debug it in one of the following lectures. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here's a board, it's got a lot of lines going around, that's showing you where you should root some of the components. Okay, let's first look at the layers, I think uh, this one we're not going to do with a simple 4 layer board or 2 layer board. We'll be going to need a 6 layer board. Signal layer top. So rename that to signal layer bottom. Okay, so we have our 4 layer board. Okay, so click OK. And then now let's get into routing. Just make sure you save that, and then zoom in. I click on that icon, and then now you're actually routing. You do that for the second one. Press Shift S. This basically makes it easy to view different layers. You can have it straight or even curved. Okay, so now we're going to test the multi-routing function. This one, basically, you have to click on all of the ones that you want to root. Click on them and then select the multi-root function, which is that blue fork kind of icon. Now, as you can see, that they all come out at exactly the same time, and it gets a bit tricky to root all of them at the same time. It has to look at the environment and what tracks are around it, and basically does want to go through because of the design rules. Shut that up and connect the D8. Okay, then you can go ahead and connect D9 as well, and D10. You can do the same for D11 slash Mosey. Now you can see we have a problem here. We have, we can't really fit that one through, otherwise it will go right around. What we'll do in this case is we're going to move this LED. We're going to move it slightly to the side so we can fit our track through. That is D12. Okay, let's see what else we can root before we start auto-routing. Okay, you can do the crystal. The crystal is important because it is a time critical and basically the heartbeat of your microcontroller. If you want to, if you make a mistake, instead of deleting everything, you can just press backspace and it will it will get rid of the last click that you made. To use a via, or via some people say, you can press minus or plus to go to the next layer and the via will automatically be created. But in some cases that your via will be too big. In this case you press you press tab and then you can create your via hole size which is 10 moles and then make your time into 12 moles. Uh, you can edit it in your styles as well, or I prefer 15. Now if you take via diameter and minus from via hole size you get your annular hole ring size. Uh, some manufacturers have a problem with uh, that size, so 
Just check with your manufacturers on, on what their capabilities are. Okay, so we're going to do the crystal. We're going to press plus to get from one side, one side to the other. We're going to connect A6. You can also change your track size in this place also by pressing tab. We did 20, but then it's against our rules, so we need to change that. Because you see our maximum is at 10. You can change that to 30 moles. Change this to 20 moles, and then our rope, that's our rope preferred. So whenever we root, our routing will be 20 moles. You can see how thick that line is. But we don't want it that thick. We want it actually 10 moles. Or some cases, maybe 8 moles. Basically depending on our port constraints. Whenever you're routing, I want you to keep it always 45 degrees at the corners. So never root at right angles. The analogy is basically like a water flowing through a pipe. If you have it flowing at right angles, it basically stops most of the flow and doesn't have a smooth flow. If you have a curved or a 45 degree pipe, it makes it much easier to flow and get a faster flow rate. So that's basically the an analogy that I use uh, in most of my cases. Okay, so now we're going to do the USB. Okay, click that and then we can join that. You can start, uh, if you click from the pad, it makes it easier because you get it right at center. Okay, ground, uh, we can actually route this to the ground plane. Join this to the capacitor and you can have a joint ground track. You can see it's too big, we make 15. We can make it slightly thicker because ground is a power plane. Power plane needs more current and thus we need a thicker track. Okay, just zoom out a little bit and let's see, let's just make sure you save. It's critical that you save. Uh, join the ground pads. For USB, uh, needs to connect to something. We got 5 volts. You can connect that straight. And then ground as well. Okay, so remember I was telling you it was a visual puzzle. You know, sometimes you'll have to move things around. Press the space bar to rotate. And then you got your ground and... Keep that 45 degrees and hook that up to your ground. Okay, the only thing that's missing is your VUSB. That we'll connect that first and then we'll have a ground plane going from around it. Okay, so let's see what else we've got to do. Click save. We're going to do, let's see, design rule check. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to select all off on online and batch on all off. And we're only going to select the main ones. We, want to, we basically want to do this check just to see that uh, if there's any design rule errors. Okay, so most of our design rules are from um, unconnected, uh, unrooted nets. Okay, so we can see this is a typical of how you do design rule check and once we do our routing, we'll do the design rule check again and then we can see how we can reduce the errors. Okay, so now let's do um, auto routing. We're going to do this. I'm going to speed this a little bit up so it doesn't take too long. Now, auto routing takes about one minute to about 20 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, how much nets that you have to root. So, in some cases, you have to be patient. On the side there where it says messages, you can see if it's stalling or if the process has been completed. Okay, so we're just going to wait a little bit to see what's happening. You can see it's doing its own routing. It's keeping all the ones that have routed already. Some cases you have to physically say, okay, don't reroute my own routing. And you can see how it it's basically solves this visual puzzle.
Okay, this one says it's gonna be done in four minutes and five seconds. It's done 72 out of 96 connections. Okay, so you can see that we have done this routing. It's not perfect. So what we're gonna do is we are going to delete all of that. So you can press Control Z because now we have a lot, lot of contentions or basically nets that have not been routed. Go to Layer Stack Manager. We're gonna add internal planes. This is planes, VCC. And we're gonna add a ground plane. Now we want to move that down so it's more or less uh, equal and basically the ground planes and the power plane acts as a Faraday cage. So it basically protects your inner layers against EMF or electromagnetic fields. So basically isolates the signals coming from other signals on your board. Okay, so you can see your, your planes. Uh, we're going to change this plane to 5 volts. And then we're going to change the bottom one, go to the power plane, change it to ground. Press G. It'll take you to the ground, ground net and then now things will be much more um, easier to root because we have a big ground plane and the ground plane will make it easier to root. Let's just change our track width to 8 moles and on the minimum and... Okay, wait, let's change it to 8 moles on the rule preferred. Now because the, the tracks are thinner, it will be much easier to root. Okay, now we go to auto root all and then you can see there's hardly any errors now. Start the auto root and then you can see after this we will have basically most of say 98% of the nets rooted. I'm basically going to speed this up just so you don't have to wait. Uh, like I said it'll take between 2 minutes to or 20 minutes depending on the speed of your computer. Okay, so I'm back. Um, you can see how it's rooted. I can't really see now. Let me just change it to light green. You can start, you can barely see some of the tracks in 3D view. Okay, so if you press Shift S, you can and press Control Shift and scroll your mouse. You can go through all the different layers, and you can see how cool it looks with the different layers. Okay, so you can see we have still uh, some errors. Uh, we have right angles, we have skew lines, and those we shall reduce or get rid of uh, in our next lecture. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to eliminate errors and do a design rule check. Now, this is going to be quite a tedious lecture, but uh, do we have to do it? This is to ensure that we don't have any mistakes. Okay, first we go to design rule check. We need to import our rules. We select all of them and click OK. And then I will include the design rule for one of the manufacturers that I go through. This will ensure that you have least amount of errors and it, it helps you from setting up all the rules beforehand, which takes quite a lot of time. Okay, so let's look at the clearance. We want to change, we can change the clearance of from pad to, to track, and we can do quite a lot of design rules. I'll cover it in a future lecture. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Let's start moving, let's start straightening all the skew lines. Now you can see that we have um, over here, we have that they're not equal, so we click tab and we reroute again. By doing this we can change the, the track itself and change, move it by dragging it also. Move it down and then move that down as well. Okay, now we can reroute this one. You can see it's not, uh, we click tab because it's not the same uh, width we can change our design rule now instead of doing this all the time we change our uh, width rule and we can change it to 10, 10 moles or 8 moles or 6 moles some manufacturers can only do 6 moles or less and uh, 6 moles or more so make sure you don't make it too thin otherwise you will be having a problem with your manufacturer you can make it nice and thick as well but for this one I'm going to make it thin uh, we can change it to 8 moles. Let's 
So in, in your design, you want to try and eliminate as much uh, right angles as possible. Because um, right angles, if you think of a river uh, moving along and you, you have a right angle pipe, that the water is going to be impeded uh, at, the, at that junction. So it's electrons work in a similar uh, way, but we can use this analogy to see how electrons flow through a trace. Okay, carry on, we just uh, carry on editing our wires. Move that along. Sometimes it's quite tricky in Altium to move that, but if you change your grid size, you can manipulate these tracks accordingly. Okay, so let's look for other ones. You can see this one is almost touching, or it is touching. Uh, this is uh, not really recommended, so we just join it up there. Delete this one on VUSB. Okay, got that one. Straighten that. Let's look closer, make that straight. We want to eliminate as much discontinuity as possible. Okay, we can move this orange layer, or the second inner layer. Okay, so we found a right angle one, we want to eliminate that. Eliminate the second one. And eliminate it again, until you, you don't have any of them. This one's Q, we want it to be 45 degrees. This makes the design much more neater. Left this one as well. Okay, we'll come off another one. You can check this one. Okay, so now we're on the bottom layer. This is the blue layer. Straighten up this one. Now you can see there's a track missing, we will get to that a little bit later. For now we're just going to straighten up all our tracks. And drag that down. And then look around if there's any other ones. We can see this fire bolt is not uh, looking too good. We're going to straighten that out. And then we have this one. That's Q as well. And now we have a big problem over here. Now, this one is with A5 is touching the reset one, and that's going to cause a big problem. And we'll get to that a little bit later. And now let's just uh, do it systematically. See, this one is also skew. Straighten that one on A. 5 volts are touching the ground as well, which is not going to be good for when you plug it in. So you're going to have a big explosion. I'm kidding. Uh, let's just eliminate this. We're going to delete those lines. We don't really need the ground wires because ground is connected to the ground plane. What auto root does sometimes is that it roots the ground wire even though you don't need it. If you have the plane, you don't need the ground wire. But having the ground plane makes it much better for your design and results in much less traces. Okay, so looking around, we just zoom in, change the layers. This is our plane, we change our plane to five, make sure it's on 5 volts, change our bottom layer. Make sure that okay, we go to the bottom layer, we see there's a problem over there. On green TX, straighten that line. Auto routing doesn't really know how to do routing that well, according to how a human can do it. Humans can solve visual puzzles much better than machines, but obviously slow at it. Okay, so now we have a problem. We delete this line, delete that, and that, because we don't want any of the lines touching. When we run our design rule check, you'll see all these errors, but it's better if we do it beforehand and solve it ahead of time.
this is a good tools design rule check and then we do all our first set of tests which is electrical test run design rule check and then we'll see how many errors we got okay so we got the uh, rule check uh, rule violations of 42 which seems quite a bit we group it by class and then we sort out class by class and see what happens okay so most of the errors is by proximity errors okay let's try and sort that out and we have fires that are touching our our tracks okay move that up a little bit it's fine if it touches the via the via is on the pad some people recommend it some people don't recommend it because when you solder it that solder goes into the via and makes it harder to remove this component Okay, do design rule check again. Uh, we put the online one so we can see uh, in real time what's happening. Okay, so we have a bunch of unrooted ones. Uh, we have, a, we'll do that later. We have a isolated island. So this is basically a plane that is isolated from a whole set of years and you can't connect to the plane. So, okay, so we now we move around, we try and play around with it. We try and move the 5 uh, volt via and try to move other tracks around so that it makes it much easier to debug the board. Okay, so we select it, we move it around. It's quite tricky, but I'm sure your, your design will be slightly different since Autoroot may do things differently for you. If it's the same, then just go ahead and just solve it. Try and get as much errors out as possible. So we're going to try and do things differently. We're going to move the green TX out. Maybe we can move the 5 volts back to the pad. That would make things much easier. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of green ones here. That this is uh, because of clearance rule. We have designed it properly, so eight moles gap is not so bad. So we change it to six moles or less than six moles. Design rule check. Run design rule check again, and you see our violations have decreased from 32 to 17. Okay, let's try and solve the, the remaining few. This one is quite challenging because uh, we are out of space and we really don't have enough track space as well as via space to move things around. Let's try and manipulate some of the bottom tracks. Change it to 15. You can go into that menu by pressing tab as well. And just delete this one we don't need this ground because like i said we have a ground plane delete that one delete that one delete the trigger just select that delete that and then we rewrote our problem is we have a one that's uh, blocking or track from going forward so we need to change that first and just drag that one down just a little bit and so this gives us place to move our our a5 to the via okay so 
now we have sorted out that error um, let's look at other ones when it says object not found that means that we have solved that error already so you don't have to worry about it you can just run design rule check and then it will reduce our errors as well okay so these ones we're not going to worry about that we're not going to worry about if you want you can change that to a net to ground you can set this in, when you're setting up the component initially or you can set it up um, now while we're doing the, the PCB layout it'll give an error but uh, that's because they're not on the same net if you make them the same net then it shouldn't be a problem and you see that error is went on, on the left we can change that for the right as well change it to ground now you can see you got the multiple layers you choose the right layer that, that of, of the component that you want Okay, so we run design rule check, we've significantly reduced our errors and you can see it's all good and well. Okay, so let's look around, see if there's any other errors. Okay, so we have a net that's not connected. That is not connected to the plane. We need to move this to connect to the crown plane, that component over there. Let's make sure that's right angle as well. Okay, this is quite tricky. Just make sure you get it. You can press Ctrl to make things more precise or to have small increments of movement. Connect it to ground. Make sure it's not the right angle. And you can straighten out a few things. Okay, so we're still getting an error, so we just need to sort that out. Just run design rule check again, we still got the same error. Okay, so let's look around. What is wrong? We have that one right on top, and that we need to sort out. We can click Ctrl and click on the pad. That will highlight all the ones that uh, connect to the same net. Okay, so this is going to be quite challenging, but we will get through it. I'll show you how, how I go about solving my track dilemmas. Yes, it's, it's tricky at times, but it depends on how you approach the problem. It's best to see, press Shift and S, go through what parts are available, and then scroll through other layers, and then try and take it from there. You can, you can try a mental picture before you try tracking it out okay so we're gonna have a break over there we're gonna put a via over there so that will help us to get from one side to the other without crossing any tracks okay so we have a layer there we can just move that over there let's bring it down and then from there we change our layers, you can press plus or minus to change from one layer to the other and create fears. Okay, now we just connect that and then we are done for that. Move that out or you can move it down to the pad, create space for you. Change that, you can see it's giving some errors. We need to reroute this one. That's net 10 C2. And then we run design rule check again. This is quite a, an iterative process and you really need to check it up quite a bit. Because design rule check, this can, there can be numbers of errors if you don't run a design rule check. And then you end up with your PCB having a lot of errors in the final uh, manufacturing. So design rule check is there to show you how to uh, get rid of these errors. In 3D view you can see where things run. You can see how things run from one side to the other on the top and bottom layer. It's quite a nifty tool and I think it helps you quite a bit sometimes. Press shift S and then you can see right through the board which gives it that really cool look but it's also functional as well ok 
Okay, so back back into rerouting mode. Back into routing mode. Uh, let's scroll to the layers, see if there's any other things. We've got two errors left. Let's see if we can eliminate them. Double click on that. You can see what error it is. So it says. Just check from the schematic if we have. Uh, we can do interact navigation to see if it's connected. In this one, you can see if. Um, or net is connected to the other side. We can do this by using interactive navigation. Two errors left, I think. Um, okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to finish the design rule check. We're going to see what else we need to do and perform additional design rule checks. I know this may seem a bit tedious and a bit tiring, but I'm, I promise you, you'll we'll get through it as, as quickly as possible. It's really a necessary step if you want your board to be as reliable as possible. Okay, so see you in the next lecture. Okay, so welcome to eliminating errors in design rule check part two. Okay, so we're gonna continue here and get right into it. Okay, so we started with A4, just gonna move that to the side. Uh, let's look around, shift S. And then we're gonna see if our planes are connected. Go around, do our check around. See what errors we got now. Okay, so it, we still had the starved, um, starved plane error, so we're just going to move the 5 volt around, see if we can basically manipulate it and, and get it out of the way. You can see the green patch. Move that a little bit down, but obviously we have to rewire that. We can just try. Okay, let's do another design rule check. Okay, violation still two. We see our our thermal plane has moved. Let's read out A two. Because we don't want that uh, net antenna to be created. A net antenna is basically a a track that's going nowhere. Check different layers, we just move that a little bit so that some of the plane goes into that area. Run the central check and yes, we have accomplished that. So we have got rid of that error. We just, okay, now we can reroute the 5 volt, make it straight. We see that uh, we can delete this track over here, we don't really need that. But we still have that ground that needs to go to the other ground plane. As you can see that if we go to the bottom layer. Okay, so let's see how we do this. We're going to move the red RX a bit away. Obviously reroute that. Move the screen TX a little bit to the side. Reroute the red RX. Okay, so I think what we can do, we can just extend it a little bit to the other ground plane. And because that has a via on it, that will go down to the ground plane. Run design rule check and we still have that same violation. Let's see what we have to do now. Okay, so the problem seems that uh, the 5 volt is not connected, which we expected. Run design rule check and we have no violations. Congratulations.
Okay, so now we're going to add more rules to check if they have been violated or not. We're going to add hole to hole clearance. We're going to add silk, silk, uh, net antenna, silk to board clearance. Uh, minimum solder mask silver. We're going to add the online and batch of both. Regarding the other ones, we don't really need to, to test them as yet. Uh, we don't really need to test those. Okay, so we have 58 rules that have been violated. Uh, on the outside, they said there's a violation, but I think you can ignore those. That's probably just an error in Altium. You can see that we have a whole lot of errors that are below 5 moles. It's given that error because the clearance distance is below the rule that we specified. Okay, so basically to do that, we just drag it out. You can try and get it out so it doesn't break that rule. It gets a bit tricky to manipulate it because if you move it from one side to the other, it may violate another rule. So it, you have to be tricky when you get uh, when you try to handle all the, all of this. Another way is we can change the rules. We can make it below five moles, say four moles. This one is 4 moles, uh, we can't really do anything about that, That's be, that shouldn't be a problem in the manufacturing though. Let's move to the side, move net D1 slash 2 down. Okay, so that should work. Let's reroute that line over there so it doesn't create any net antennas. Let's delete. Okay, tools. Let me run another one. So we went from 58 down to 41. Okay, let's check our rules. I think we can make this slightly smaller. Obviously, you, you need to check this on your manufacturer's website. They specify all the rules that you need to check for and what the capabilities are. You just make that properly. Make that straight. Okay, then go to design rule check again. We went from 41 down to 35. Okay, let's see what else we can eliminate. We see this A4 is causing a bit of a problem. It's going to try and move it around. I think we, this one we can move it a little bit out, away from everything, and then just bring the red line across. Run it again, it's still on the same problem. Okay, so we ha when creating the components over here, we have this problem that you can check on, on the capacitors. The pink lines show that um, there's some clearance space available, but according to Ultim, it wants a bigger space. So we're going to change this. We're going to change to slightly less. Uh, do the same for this pad. You can edit edit it in. Um, you can edit it in component view, but that would take long. But it'd be worth it in the future when you're editing when you're creating future boards. So I definitely advise you to do that as an exercise. You're going to do this for future capacitors as well. Let's see, it's giving that error. The three mole error. We're going to see how we can get rid of all of that. See where we can move it around. The pink lines we can is basically the, the um, clearance system, so nothing that comes in contact with it. The main thing you have to be concerned about is the silver part. That's where the actual copy is. And what's good about Ultim is that it keeps that distance so you don't get any short circuiting when you don't need it. And it basically keeps you from getting any short circuits. Okay, lock primitives, click on that. So what lock primitives is, uh, if you want to change a component, you can use lock primitives. 
Sometimes you need to do it, sometimes you don't need to click on that. It basically allows you to manipulate a component uh, in, in PCB view instead of in the PCB footprint manager. Okay, so we do that, that capacitor. Uh, let's see what else is violating. And if you click uh, lock parameters, you should really check it back just to make sure that none of the components move if you try to move it. Because if you move the component, it may not move all the footprints. It may not move all the pads. You can change this one as well. Click lock parameters. Move that a little bit away. In that track, just move that also a bit closer, a little bit further away. You can straighten the A4 track so we have space to move the reset a little bit away. Now you see we have a net antenna error there. If you connect it back to the reset, we won't have that problem. So, okay, so we end 5 down from 35. Okay, let's see what else is the problem. I think we should change this to 2. If it's such a problem, if we run design rule check, it should reduce our errors to 25. Let's just move that up. <clears throat> I know it's a tedious process, but this is what, it, what needs to be done at times. And what Ultim does, it helps you to minimize all those errors so you don't get disappointed when you manufacture your PCB. Okay, here we have a big problem. As you can see, we have redundant VS. We don't really need that. Okay, so... We'll come back to that. I'm just going to connect this back, make it look nice, and straighten that track. And then we move reset back up, and then we get it away from all the busy tracks. Do our design rule check again. And we went down a bit from 25 to 20, 21. Okay, so we did the same thing with this. We can lock perimeters. We can unlock perimeters and change the size of the pad. Do the same with the other one. And don't forget to lock perimeters again. Okay, move that out, move that out away from the VM, so we can have space there. It says object not found, don't, don't worry about that. And then move the ground via away. Still giving the 2mm error, 2 mole error. Okay, so let's run design tool check. We're going down now. We're almost there. I can guarantee we're going to get this thing done as soon as possible. Just a few, just bear with me a little bit. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. We can, that's not necessary. We can do this again. We're going to change this to 49 molds. Change this one also to 49, and then we get rid of that error. Okay, see, let's see what else. Sometimes it's very hard to spot these errors. You need to go on different layers and see what's happening on the different layers. Sometimes you have to check it on all layers to see the overall picture of what's happening. It takes a bit of getting used to. 
but I'm sure uh, with practice you'll get get it. Remove that out and just reroute that. This handle check went tree down, tree down. Let's move this one a little bit away. Okay, this crown is giving a problem. Let's move that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see we have we coming back to this one. We can move it away. Move the A3 away, but it's gonna give that error over there. So we need to move something else. Somewhere that it won't give such a big error. Okay, that should be fine, but we have to reroute that. We have to reroute D5. Okay, so basically we have six errors left. Uh, I know you must be tired by now. In the next lecture, we're gonna finish this off. It's gonna, I promise you, it's gonna be a very short lecture. Don't, don't you worry. Okay, so I'll see you in part three just to finish everything off and get it ready for the manufacturers. Thank you for watching. Okay, so welcome to part three of eliminating errors and design rule check. Okay, so this is gonna be a short video. I promise you, it's gonna be very quick. Uh, we're gonna get through this. Uh, just a few more errors that we need to eliminate, and then we're done. Okay, so let's look around. We got these few errors. The two more errors, basically, we need to move them around to get away from the the main bodies. Like this one, we move that one, and then we can drag the the we can drag the tracks as well if you want. A little trick is uh, to get the right track. Uh, you can either be press Shift S and move to the right layer, or you can, or you can just click on the layer track that you want. Okay, move D three a little bit around, and then we need to straighten this one out. It's not looking too good. To shift the tracks, you need to click on either the, the extreme right or extreme left to move them. If you click it in the middle, it'll move just the middle segment of it. Okay, so we run design rule check and we have only two errors. Yeah, almost there. Okay, we change that also. Uh, just change the other pad to 49. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, this one is skew, so we can reroute that. Do net C9-2. Okay, let's see what else we have left. Okay, now we can click, we can check for unconnected pins. Okay, now with unconnected pins, this is just to see that what we've created in our schematic reflects exactly in our PCB view. This is also to see if we have a pad that's not connected and it's supposed to be connected. That's another reason for doing this check. You can see an example right over here. We have number four of the regulator that's not connected. Now, we really want this pad to be connected because that's connected to the voltage out pin. And you can see that we did not connect it. We see three pins, but we, we actually there's actually four pins that should be actually connected. This big pad basically helps with the current flow, so that things don't get overheated. This is a five volt pad. We just we're gonna we can either change it in um, footprint manager or we can change it in uh, the PCV mode. Okay, let's run the design rule check. We still got twenty one. Okay, let's just check through all the others to see if they uh, are supposed to be connected or not supposed to be connected. This is important. Okay, run design rule check. We can take that out now if you checked it thoroughly. And we say we got only one violation left. Okay, so that's just that one. That should be an easy one for us to change. Move it around. And let's see if there's any other problems. Okay, run design rule check. And yes, there we are. We have zero errors. Thank God, you must be saying. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so now we just do a last minute check to see if everything is according to our specification. 
we cannot have any right angles we want to have straight lines and some 45 degrees li lines as well try to minimize the path as much as possible and you can see that we have one there the less bends the better and the quicker the current can get to, from one side to the other You can just do some last minute checks and just move things around if you want and just make things a little bit neater. Now we just need to check all the layers to make sure that, that nothing, like over here we have a problem over here. We have a net antenna that's not supposed to be there. You can just delete that. And then this one also is a bit skew. You can bring it a little bit closer. And then you can look around, see if there's any other potential problems. And you can see we have a little bit of a non-straight line there. You can see we have a little bit of a bulge over there. I'm we'll trying to delete the, the additional tracks there. You can see it's giving the, the net antenna problem. Okay, so we fixed that now. You can just move around, look around. Okay, so now um, I want you to go to the bottom layer and look around. Look around for any errors that uh, I mentioned earlier. Okay, so when you're happy, you just run design rule check and then if you get zero errors with the current configuration, then everything should be awesome and ready for manufacturing. Okay, so remember I told you how I was going to make your Arduino Nano a little bit better than the original. Well, this is it. Okay, so first, um, we want to change the corners. We want to make it rounded, unlike the original. And so we want to clean up the text as well, to make sure that it's not on any components. Okay, so first of all, we're going to create an arc. So first we're going to place arc. We change the grid, just to make sure that it's equal. And then we just drag it across there. Press space, and then you can change press tab to change the width. Now you can see that it's not uh, almost like uh, perpendicular, so we're going to change this by dragging. But because our grid is not on, it's not going to snap. So we need to change the grid, we just change it to 5 and see what happens. Okay, that works perfectly. Instead of doing that all the time, we're going to copy and paste, and then press space, and then copy to the other sides. I'm going to show you how to redefine the ball shape. Okay, so we got that. Okay, now we should select all the... Okay, before we do that... Okay, so first we're going to delete all... We're going to delete the corners. Uh, for some reason we have to drag them out and then delete them. Okay, so we got a nice round Arduino, but it's not defined as yet. So just select all of them, all of the edges, and then we're going to redefine our board shape. Then you go to design, board shape, and then define as board shape. Press 1, 2, 3, just to make sure it uh, refreshes the board. And then you can see it looks way, way better than the original. It looks much more clean. You can change the color and I think it, personally, I think it looks much better in blue. You can rotate it, you can see everything looks much better, okay, in my opinion. You can rotate it and see how it looks. Okay, now, now we need to clean up the text and move it, some we can move closer to the, some we can move closer to the bodies. Drag that X1 to the crystal. And we can change the, the grid to 5 as well. Move D4 a little bit closer. And then D3, you can rotate it and put it somewhere else. Somewhere not close to the wires. D2 as well. And D1. S3, I would move it closer to the USB, the connector. Then we flip it over. See, now I move it out of the way of the VR, C8 close to the component, 
C9 down and then you can see a whole lot of um, text on fears which is not really cool and it makes it really hard to see and some for some manufacturers they don't print text that are on pads or fears so it's better to move it out of the way you can do the same for C5 then that corner C6 the regulator as well now the regulator is a little bit too big um, I suggest we shrink it down a little bit press 2 right click and then make it fatty and I think that should do the job because since there's only one regulator we don't need to see that one um, now for the regulator we can see that it's a little off center you can change this in the original components but Say if you're too lazy to do that, you can move it while it's on the PCB and instead of changing the PCB from all of us from scratch. But in the future, you would have to do it uh, so you don't have to redo it all the time. Okay, so we're going to move it a little bit. We move the C2. And look for any other components, uh, other text that may be off. Just move that up there. Uh, we can rotate it. That'll be much clearer. Clear. Okay, now I'm trying to find the one for this one. Uh, you can see it's hiding over there. A uh, typical example of uh, how it makes things hard if you don't sort it out the first time. Okay, just double check. I think everything is clear and your PCB is ready to go. Do a design quick design rule check and you can see we have zero violations okay so thanks for watching in the next lecture i'm going to show you how to add text strings to the pcb okay so in this lecture i'm going to be showing you how to generate manufactured gerber files and generate your bullet materials okay so let's get started okay so first of all we need to get files that your manufacturer can understand and to do this, we generate Gerber files. Okay, so first of all, we go to File, Fabrication Outputs, Gerber Files. And then on the first output, you can leave everything as is. On Layers, I want you to click Plot Layers and All On. And then we want Mechanical Layer on 1, On. Uh, on Drill Drawings, leave it as is this. I just leave it as it is. And then Advanced, I want you to leave everything as it is. Basically for mechanical one, that's the board shape that we have. So now we have our Gerber file, you can see how it looks in Gerber view. I want you to save that. Save it as Chemtastic 1. Now go back to Fabrication Outputs and now we want to generate our aperture list. Uh, just uncheck that and then click on uh, Save As. You can click it as my first Arduino or MFA.apt. Then do the same again, add it to project, all files, and then look for MFA.apt. Okay, and that should be added to the project. Okay, then go to fabrication outputs and go to NC drill files. Okay, we're going to leave everything as it is and then just click OK and OK again. And then you can see how our drill files look. You can see all the vias and drill holes. This is basically the drill files for the drill machines at the manufacturers. Okay, now we need to check uh, the layers, our layer stack manager. Okay, just right click on the part at the bottom and click layer stack manager. Now this shows what um, how thick each layer will be of your PCB. Okay, so what I want you to do is print screen or you can copy this into a Word document. Okay, so now we, we have our files, we need to generate our Gerber files and we need to make backups. For this, we use Project Packager. Okay, right click on Project, Save and Project Packager. Click Next. Here you have different options that you can use. Uh, there's directories, leave it as it is and then I'll show you what happens. Next, and you can see all the files are here besides the library files. 
Um, for portability, it's, uh, it's best to include them um, so that in case you lose them, you know it's part of your project. You can see if we drag it on, we can go into our zip file. Yeah, we have our zip file right on, right on top. If you sort by date, and then we have all our files over there. So this, it's good to keep backups and using a project packager, it, you can just take that one file and take it anywhere you want. Let's go back into project packager and now we're going to change a few options. Use the relative part to file drive and then you can see how we include all our libraries as well. Okay, so we have directories in zip file. Use relative part to file drive or use relative parts to common parent directory. Okay, then we have all the files. We see all, we have the Camtastic and Gub files and the NC drill files. And that will be included in our next subfile. And that will include all our project files. Okay, for the last time we're going to project packager. And now we, we don't want the manufacturers to have our schematic. If they have our schematic, they can reproduce our design and we don't want that. So I want you to uncheck all the PCB documents. You can leave that PCB file there, PCB project file. And then click next and then click finish. Okay, we call this my first Arduino version 1.00 for manufacturers. And then we're going to create a new folder and say this manufacturer files for quotation. So basically all your your manufacturer files that you're going to send out for quotes, you put it in this folder. Then we create a backup archive folder and put that also in there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and create the bill of materials. This is for our, our assemblers. We're going to schematic view, click, click on reports, and then bill of materials. Just wait a little while for our bill of materials window. Okay, and then we're going to go straight to comment and uh, footprint. We draw this. This is how we are. This is basically how we arrange our bill of materials. And we're going to do that by looking for design ID, design item ID. Click on all the RS stock numbers that you can find. Sometimes there might be multiple of them. And then in Excel, we're going to put them all into one column. So we export it to Excel. We can call this my first Arduino POM. Okay, and then it should export. And then if you go to project outputs, uh, you'll click on the date and then you will find this in Excel, we'll, we'll find our Excel file. You can just widen the columns a little bit and then we can copy all the RS stock numbers into one column. And basically delete these columns to make sure there's no confusion. Okay, then you click save and then you see here's all the RS stock numbers. You can basically copy and paste all these RS stock numbers into RS website and you can order them all at one go. Okay, so that concludes our course. I uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. it do, I know it's been a long journey and you have accomplished a lot. That's what I got to say. You have created your own Arduino Nano. That's something to be proud of. You can go ahead now and get creative, create your own um, devices, Arduino devices, maybe different kind of microcontrollers or uh, other devices such as FPGAs, you can go into some of that. But for now, um, uh, I really want to congratulate you, you have came so far and uh, I wish you all the best in your, I wish you all the best in your future career or future endeavors. And thank you for participating in this course. Um, I will be uploading more courses um, in the future. So hope you stay tuned. Come back uh, regularly if you want to brush up your skills. Uh, if you want, I can upload another course. And in this course, I'll teach more advanced techniques. Basically, we have only scraped, uh, scraped the surface. Basically, we have only scraped the surface of Altium. 
there's much more powerful techniques you can do, such as flexible PCBs, bendable PCBs, and uh, multi-sheet techniques, um, and creating way more advanced boards. Uh, I can only begin to scrape the surface of all the things you can do with it. So this free course is sponsored by Next PCB. If you register right now, you'll get a $100 free coupon to use on your next order. So it doesn't matter if you're coming from Altium, KiCad, Eagle, etc. Next PCB will help you to both manufacture and assemble your PCBs for you. It's very simple to get started. On the website, you can just put in the dimensions of your board, enter in how many boards you want, the number of layers, as well as the board thickness. And just like that, you'll receive an instant quote. Now, of course, if you have very specific requirements, you can also customize your order. They also have this really cool software called Next DFM. So normally when you convert your Altium or KiCad files into Gerber files, you can sometimes encounter some unexpected problems that can often destroy the functionality of your board. Now this is where Next DFM comes in. It is a one-click design analysis tool that checks for any hidden dangers in your design files and provides low-cost optimization solutions so that your board just works. I mean, there's nothing worse than spending all of your time designing your PCB, spending all that money to get it manufactured and assembled, only for it to come back as a useless paperweight. <sighs> nothing is more frustrating. Trust me, I know. So that is why I recommend signing up to use this free tool and to check your design files before manufacturing. All of the links, libraries, and instructions mentioned in this course will be in the links down below.